Hello siblings, welcome to Prague Mastery. Today we're going to talk about all of the books I rated three stars in 2022. The first book that I gave three stars to was the second volume of Nichijou. This is a manga, it's very quirky, very absurd, <laughs> and very random. So it was a little adventure, it was cute, but I wouldn't call it amazing. I think it's worth your time if you need something lighthearted and fun and you don't really need a lot of brain cells to process. The next three star book I had was A Taste of Sage by Yafa Santos. This was pretty good. I thought it was really solid for a romance. To be fair, I don't like adult romance very much, the contemporary versions. I'm just not a huge fan. Something told me I would like this book and I think I did. <laughs> I think. The love interest made me angry and I did not like that they never had a conversation about his behavior at the beginning of the book, but I really loved the representation in this book and I loved the kind of magical quirk little sprinkle of magic that they had in there and I loved the main character's heritage and the feeling that it gave me. It gave me a warm, nostalgic, cultural feeling, if that makes any sense. And I loved that there were recipes included throughout the book. I thought that was really fun. The next book I gave three stars to was Feral Sins by Susan Wright. I thought this was a, quite the journey. It was very fun and it surprised me. It's not my usual to be into a book that is so much in the gray. <laughs> if you get what I'm saying. This is a werewolf fantasy and it is very steamy. That is the purpose. I really enjoyed it though. I really did. I'm not usually into those alpha males, but I was, I was into this one and I'm happy I read it, but I would not say that this is objectively good writing and I would not say it is objectively something that many people will enjoy. If you like spicy werewolf romances that are very graphic, I recommend. The next book I gave three stars to is These Hollow Vows by Lexi Ryan. This really surprised me. I did not think I was gonna like this, but it was really good. I actually may even say that I like this more than Akatar, which is strange because I loved Akatar as a teenager. I do not like it as an adult, but I acknowledge that I really liked it at some point. But this book, I think I liked more. I like Reese more than I like this main character so far, but or the main love interest, but I still thought this was really excellently done and I was hooked at the end. Up until the last few chapters, I didn't think I was going to continue on in the series. I was just like, okay, this was pretty good. But that last chapter in this book, I immediately wanted to buy the second book and read it because it ended super well. Lexi Ryan, you're on to something. You're on to something. Very, very pleasantly surprised by this. The next book that I gave three stars is Nimona by N.D. Stevenson. This is a graphic novel that many, many, many people have told me that I would enjoy. So I gave it a shot and I thought it was okay. It's about a henchman of a villain and her adventure, <laughs> her secrets, her whatever you want to call it. It was fine. It did not live up to the hype that I was given. I thought it was okay and I think it's becoming a movie so we'll see if I watch it but I wasn't overall blown away by it although I did think it was fun and gave me very strong mega mind vibes which you know I'm a fan of so it was fun. The next book I read was Chef's Kiss by Jarrett Melendez. This was a comic that was on Kindle I believe <laughs> and it was fine. It was a gay romance between a journalist and a chef, I suppose. And there's a little bit of a quirky thing going on and things just kind of get a little weird at some point. It was fun. I really loved the found family of the roommates that the main character lived with, but the overall execution left me feeling like it was quirky and just a little strange. So it was good and I recommend it if you need a good laugh and a gay romance. I gave the first volume of Space Battle Lunchtime a three stars because I feel like we didn't get enough of the world building and the characters, but the next two volumes did pick up the pace for that and did make up for the lacking first volume. I do think it was worth the read by the end of the series. The next book I gave three stars to is Night of the Soul Stealer by Joseph Delaney. This is part of the Last Apprentice series or the Spooks 
series or whatever it is. This is the third book in a children's horror series and it is horrifying. <laughs> Even though I thoroughly enjoyed this book, I gave it three stars because there is a lot of sexism and elitism in here. A lot of you know, modern religion is better than old religion and women are nothing and they're silly and they don't know what they're talking about and should be oppressed. So I was not a fan of those themes, even if I think this is really good horror. Like it's actually scary, even though it's for kids. And I really like the main character. I just really hate the spook and the way that women are treated in this series. I'm gonna continue on, but I do not recommend to children, especially female ones, and I do not recommend for the reasons I already stated. Next I read The Aquanaut by Dan Santat. This is a children's graphic novel. I thought it was pretty good. It has really strong family themes. I really loved the relationship between the girl and her uncle. I loved that that was a positive relationship and I thought it was a fun little adventure. I did not get moved by it in any way, nor did I think it was a super unique plot, although I thought it was very fun. Next, I have Victories Greater Than Death by Charlie Jane Anders. This was really fun. This is the first in a young adult sci-fi series following queer characters. I really enjoyed this book. It was a fun adventure. I thought the audiobook was pretty good, although the narrator sounded like a little child, which was really strange. It was good. The villain was very mustache twirling. I don't think it was the most delicately crafted villain and plotline, but the world was pretty vast. I wished we got a little bit more detail into the world and a little more explanation because, you know, this is not a very long book. I, I just feel like we could have gotten more to get invested in, but there were a lot of very interesting concepts and it was very fun and I loved being in <laughs> the main character's head. Tina was really funny and yeah, overall I really love this and I'm surprised more people aren't talking about it because it was really good and I am gonna give this to my kid when she's of age. Next I gave three stars to Hotel Magnifique which I did DNF. I got 50% of the way through and then skimmed to the end just to see what happened. I was not super invested nor impressed with it although I do acknowledge that it was very well written and I do think that if the characters and the story worked for you you would really love this book. It was really well written, the world is very interesting, though not super vast, and I think the vibes were on point. <laughs> it's, it's a vibes book, like The Night Circus. So yeah, if it sounds interesting to you, I'd say give it a go, because it was pretty well written. Next, I read The Traveling Cat Chronicles. This was recommended to me by my sister-in-law. She <laughs> lent it to me, and it was fine. I felt like the author was manipulating the reader into crying, and it was just like, of course, all of these things happen to this main character. But it was told from the perspective of a cat, which I thought was really interesting and unique. I do not feel like I wasted my time. I really enjoyed the book. I just, at some point, got really bored. I didn't find the human chapters to be interesting at all. And I found the cat chapters to be all right, although there was some transphobia that the cat had, which I thought was really silly and not necessary. So don't recommend for the transphobia reasons, but if you are interested in this book and you are not sensitive to transphobic thoughts and internalizations, then I recommend giving it a try if you need a good cry. The last three star read I had of the year was The Many Deaths of Lila Starr by various authors. This book was nominated for the Goodreads Choice Awards and I thought it was really good. It was very solid. I personally did not connect with the type of story it was, but that's just a personal preference thing. I'm more into fantasy and sci-fi than ancient gods kind of things. It was very mythology based and I could tell, but the art style was amazing and it was very, very well done. So if you're into mythology and gods and whatnot, this was amazing. It also has some philosophical questions going on that left me thinking for a few weeks. So I highly recommend this one. And those were all the three star books that I read in 2022. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.